Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to Still in Canada. We're not here to talk about the coffee today. We're actually going to take a little bit of a different track. And we're going to talk about the spirits and how to drink them. Or how I like to drink them. Uh, I'm in no way a whiskey sommelier. And, you know, I'm not, I would never ever call myself a whiskey snob. I'm the furthest from that. And we'll discuss that in a bit. But I do want to maybe pass on to you what I've learned, how I enjoy the spirits, and how I experiment and learn to enjoy them. So, let's get on to that. So, first off, right off the bat, is your choices of glasses. And we have the three of the ones that I have the most, and although I seldom don't use this one much anymore, this is a evening type of glass, uh, a whiskey on the rocks, or with a Coke, or you know, rum and Coke, that sort of thing. Um, and it's just, it's an open flute. It's not for, uh, it's for an evening social event. It's not for uh, smelling, tasting, or, or defining a single malt or anything like that. It doesn't have the ability to impart flavors or the aromas that we want into it. But on the rocks, that's a perfect world glass to use. More, and you'll see these have a very similar shape to them. They're more of a tulip shape, and that's really what you want. And it does a few things. Now, if you're just starting out, this size would probably be good with the large opening and everything else. The only problem is, it's too much alcohol. And for me to put an amount in there that would be reasonable, um, I would never drink that in a sitting. So, I don't use this too often either. So we come down to this little guy. This is a Glencairn. And they are absolutely fantastic. They are what I would say is probably the best aromatic glass and, uh, for sniffing, for getting the sense of what you're going to be having an enjoyment of. Uh, this is probably perfect. Now in holding it, Glen Karen, you should be holding it by the stem. You should not be holding it like this. Um, you know, if you see something like this, you know, I don't say anything. But, yeah, you'll see the etiquette it tends to be more of holding it by the base. And whenever I hold a glass, I always just let it rest on my finger so I can enjoy it that way. And it, it's easy to uh, turn in this and that. So, I have a few selections here. And when you're first starting out, learning to drink a whiskey, scotch, Irish whiskey, bourbon, anything like that, it's a developed palate. It's a developed way of uh, you know getting yourself used to doing this. And you're going to find some are just knocked down hard to drink. And you know what? They may take a while. You may get there. You may never get there. It doesn't matter. Uh, you'll find some that are just too harsh for you, and that's fine. If you're just starting out and you've always drank a uh, mixed spirit or this and that and you want to get in the world of a single malt, or even a blended, uh, but just neat, in, or even on the rocks, that takes a little bit of time, and it's a bit of a learning curve. So, what do we have sitting here? Well, these are relatively, well, not him, but these are Canadians. Uh, these are also all craft spirits. So, they're all done by craft distilleries, and they're fairly local to where I am. And I tend to do a lot of these. Well, once again, look around. That is what I'm becoming as well. But I do enjoy this. Now, do I like every one of them? No, no, of course not. Um, but I do enjoy trying new things. I know that when I get this and I get this, these are been around for a long time. I know what the flavor profiles are going to be. There's no real big surprises in there or any of that. This one here is also a local distillery, and it uh, last drop. You know they've been around for a while, 
And this is a, it's not a whiskey, it is a spirit, it hasn't aged for three years yet. So it's a nice bottle, it's kind of neat. He pulled it out a little, a little bit early on the cast and it doesn't harm at all. It, uh, it's really a nice little drink. I do enjoy it. Well, you can see I've been in the bottle for a while now. So now you see I've poured very little. There's very little in there. And once again, Topia Snob, whatever someone likes drinking their beverage, that's their choice, that's great. You have no opinion on that. And it's so easy to make someone feel small about how they do this. Uh, avoid that at all costs. So you can turn this around and you can see the oils that are sitting on the glass. And that's just a way of looking at it in the sea. But one thing you shouldn't do is you shouldn't sit here and swirl it. When you swirl it in the tulip, what it does is it centralizes the alcohol and releases the alcohol, straight alcohol, right up the stem, right up through the glass. So that if you swirl it and you take a quick sniff, then you're going to get nothing but an alcohol burn. So yeah, avoid that. And when you first start, you know, if you haven't been doing this much or that you're just starting into this, you know, take, take small little sniffs, hold the glass further away, and then, you know, bring it a little bit closer. And while you're doing it, leave your mouth not gaping open, but leave it cracked a little bit. And what this does, as you're sniffing in, and you know, the morning to the evening, you're going to pick up different smells and different things out of what you're drinking. One day to the next, whatever you eat prior is going to affect how you uh, discern what's in the glass. So leave your mouth open, and what happens is, if your mouth is closed, then when you breathe in, it actually buffets and stays in your sinuses, and you lose, you, you, you concentrate the alcohol up here and you lose the ability to really discern the flavor of the whiskey or the, or the styling of the whiskey. I find most times whiskeys taste very close to, they, to what they smell like. Now let's get there are exceptions. But also, when I am sniffing one, I'm getting some right on the back of my tongue. And that preps me for the flavor I'm going to be getting. So I know what this is going to taste like before I ever put it in my mouth. And once again, when you're starting, start out here, work it in, just a little sniff, take it away, take a couple breaths, come back in again, take it, you know, take a break. And then once again, you'll work over time, you'll work into moving this almost right into your nose. So you can bring it right up. And you can move it around and you'll find that you can pick out different flavors as you do that. Now I like the Glen Karen because once again, although I have a fairly large snaz, it fits in here fine. Um, you don't have to, if it's too much, just go off to the side. You know, and you can get a lighter sense. If you're ever feeling a burn, stop, back it off and uh, you know you may want to change the way this is going to be. We'll talk about that in a second. So when you're about to, when you you know taste on the back of your tongue from smelling it in, then you're going to be looking at taking a little drink, have a little sip, not a big gulp, and you're going to take a little bit of a sip, but there's a way of breathing this. Now you've all seen, or you may have done it yourself, where you've seen people take a large mouthful and then really get because it's, it's burning, it's hurting, it's everything else. You see tears, you see their eyes winkling a whole bit. Uh, this can all be avoided in a few ways, but first off is breathing. So when I'm about to take a drink, what I'll do is I'll usually sniff first and then as I've inhaled, I'll hold that down, that breath down, then I'll take my little sip, I'll move it around coat the inside of my tongue, my mouth, and then I'll, ex I'll swallow, and then I'll exhale. By doing that, what you've done is you're, you now have the flavors, you've exhaled the alcohol vapors in your next breath in. 
you're essentially going to get more flavors of the whiskey itself and you're not going to get the straight alcohol burn which is well, what caused you to cough the first time. So that's actually quite nice. Now, this is a very young spirit. Uh, it hasn't been in a barrel for three years yet, and you can taste that it's a young spirit. There's a winter wheat in there, you can tell the corn. There's a caramelization, which is really kind of neat. And yeah, it's uh, for a young spirit, it's worth a while. It's, it's, I enjoy it, so that's pretty decent. Yeah, that's nice. Now, that's probably a little bit higher proof. Yeah, it's 45. So, it's it's not not a barrel strength at 62, but, you know, it's 45. So, uh, let's see. Um, I have nothing really high proof. I don't have any cast strength. But this one is a rye. This is at uh, 57.2. Now, this is 100% rye. And you'll find with this, Now, I should have washed the glass out, I know that. But I've done these, this mix before, so I'm okay. So you'll find with this that, you know, once again, you look at it, you can see the oils just, you know, the thing they're sticking to the glass. And it's really fascinating. So it gives you an idea of how thick and how much of the oils have come through in the distilling and what is picked up in the barrel. So it's, it's really quite nice. Uh, With the rye, it's quite a spicy note. Now, this is at 57%, which is fine. I, I did say 57. Yep, 57.2. Which is fine for someone who's been drinking or, or enjoying this for a long time, or has developed fairly quickly. But what you'll find is when you're starting out, there's nothing wrong with using spring water. Um, I don't really like distilled water, but spring water's good. Cutting it down. That's too much. Usually it's great when you have a little straw, you have a glass straw, you just pick up a little bit and put it in. Uh, but it cut it down to 32, 35%. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all. And what that does is it, it cuts off that alcohol burn and it allows you to get the whiskey flavor of it. Now, it, over time, you'll probably use less and less water and you will, you'll increase the ABV into what you're drinking. But, you know, when you're starting, there's nothing wrong with doing this. I did it when I started. That was definitely too much water. But the neat thing is, being a rye, having those spice notes, 100% rye, having those spice notes, even with too much water, it's watered down. It's, it's not something I would enjoy drinking as it, as it is right now. But even with that much water, I can, I don't have the burn, very little burn. That's all gone. And I can pick out the flavor, the character of what's in that bottle. So that's kind of neat. Uh, you know, have the character and do it, that's great. And that's way too watery. At least for my legs. So we've talked mostly about you know how to enjoy your spirit and some of the things you can do. And once again, please, uh, a few things that I, I don't like and I really uh, uh, get turned off by is people who are snobbish about this. Uh, once again, we all have different flavor profiles for our palate. So how I enjoy it, you may not enjoy it and the next person may not enjoy it. If someone likes having water in there, or likes having ice, that's fine. That's their choice. That's the way they enjoy it. And if someone just starting out, I would highly expect them to put water in. 
And it's also a growing thing. I mean, for a lot of people, this is not something you can just jump into and, and you enjoy automatically. There are certain things, like I started with scotch and uh, um, as, as a young lad, you know, we, we took uh, rum and cokes and, and uh, rye and coke and rye and ginger. And I haven't had a mixed drink in probably 20 years. Um, I My palate changed. I no longer, uh, I, as you saw, I've already poured two or three and I, don't, I haven't had an ounce yet of alcohol. So, you know, it's, uh, it's how you enjoy it. If you're pouring, you know, large drinks and shooting them back, it's not the channel for you. I'm not the person that, you know, you, you want to learn from. If you're into experimenting and, you know, learning new flavors and developing a palette for certain things, yeah, follow along, it's great. Uh, you know, there's, there's like, you know, when you start talking about scotches, here we have Akintoshin. Now, Akintoshin is a, a space side scotch and it has a sherry type finish. And when you're drinking that, take small sips because you can, you know, the first couple of sips are different than the next couple and so on and so on. You're learning more, you taste more, you can experience more the further down the line you go. Um, Ardbeg is, is a very heavy Isle of Scotch. Uh, to me, that's, it's, it's briny, it's, it's heavy moss, the smoke, um, saltiness. And uh, I say iodine a lot because I pick up a lot of like that iodine flavor. And that's, that, you know, it's, it's funny. When I first started, I could not touch them. And I'm finding that over time that my, cha cha uh, my taste has changed. And when I have a drink about the yard bag, I'm now learning more. I'm now discovering more. There, are, there is a sweetness in here. It, it definitely still has that salt, it has the brine, everything else, but I also get sweetness into it as well. So I can, as it's going through my palate, I can feel and I can taste the changes that, that develop within, you know, mixing with the saliva and getting warmed up to the temperature of my mouth. So, I mean, the second you put, you know, this is probably sitting at 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit right now. As soon as I put it in my mouth, it's at 98 instantly. So that's vaporizing some alcohol right away. And then it takes a little bit of time for that flavors to start coming in from the whiskey itself. And that's fine. You know, it, you drink for what you enjoy. You, you, don't, uh, you don't listen to anyone else. It does not matter what anyone else thinks. If you enjoy it a certain way, go for it. If you buy something and you're not a big fan of it, put it on your shelf, try it again later. You may find you develop, develop over the time. Now learning, you know, when you're, when you're buying, especially in the higher ends, and I have no real high ends here. Most of this is under 100 each. And uh, I do have some higher end ones. Now before I spend that type of money, and even once again, the Akintoshin, that's something you may want to go to, you know, a whiskey bar or, or a, a local bar. Try an ounce or a half ounce. Uh, you know, I've got a bartender who will pour me a quarter ounce. And it, it kind of lasts because he knows I'm not there to have a effect in my head. I'm there to experience what's in this glass. And I hope you are too, because uh, that's where this world is really shining and that's where you you grow and you just imagine all sorts of new things that you can try. And that comes into what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be, you know, not going after there's the drink, enjoy it. Uh, we're going after flavors and, you know, once again, I, you know, these distilleries here in Ontario, uh, Murphy's is a great one, you know, they've got a few good products. And there's some of their stuff I really like, and there's some I don't. And, you know, once again, we all have that desire. Same with the, uh, the Reunion Moonshine, there's, there's their maple one. Uh, great company, some beautiful flavors, and some that I'm not a fan of. Uh, and I, I'm not just a whiskey person, I like pretty much all the lines. 
some are good, some are bad. You know, here's a vodka here from Betty's. It's a potato vodka, and it is pretty decent. I like it. Um, but, you know, 90% of you are going to drink a vodka in a Clamato or Bloody Mary. So, it, it, whether it's a Caesar or a mixed drink, that's up to you. That's, you know, your, your personal taste. I still drink even vodka. I drink straight. Because when I drink a vodka, there is flavors in every vodka I've ever tried. Not so much the flavor I'm after on a vodka, but the mouthfeel. And, you know, in designing our vodka for Silver Fox, that's what we're, you know, aiming at is, how does this feel on my palate? Is it is smooth? Is it creamy? This is what I'm looking for. Or is it rough and hard? You know, it's, it's your desire. When you look at things like Moonshine, you know, here's, here's the White Lightning from uh, Murphy's. And, oh, some of you should know this one. This is the Timex. Now, this is one of the most popular selling bottles in the United States. And it, it once came. And it, it, he has a TV show there that promotes it and everything else. And, you know, it's great. He's done some really interesting things. Am I a fan of this? Not really. Um, I'm not going to knock it. I've tried it a few times. It's just not my style. But I have friends that think this is the great stuff. So once again, I can't tell you if it's good or not. I can't tell you if any of this is good. I can tell you what I like. That may not be what you like. So, you know what? It comes down to how you enjoy it. You can get by the alcohol burn. You can start off you know, cutting the proof down, you know, make it, make it a 35, 30% ABV, whatever you feel you can get without that burn, you know, and you'll find that over time, you'll, you'll go straight, you'll go for the higher strengths, and, uh, you know, don't, don't get into pouring yourself large, uh, you know, one, two, three ounce shots, there's no need, you know, typically pour a little bit, just sip a little bit at a time, you know, it, it you know, you can see there's not a whole lot here. That can last me, you know, a good 20 minutes, half an hour, easy. Um, try not to shoot your whiskey. Uh, you know, there's, there's vodka for that, or tequila if you want. It, it's, it, once again, that's not my cup of tea. Uh, when I have a whiskey, I, I like to enjoy it. I like to discover it, learn new things about it. So, folks, Thank you for joining me. Still in Canada is here, and once again, Silver Fox Distillery behind me is here because of uh, people like you. You know, love your comments. Glad you're uh, enjoying what I do. I'd like to do more, more content uh, once we get into the distilling, and we're looking forward to that in the recipe room in the lab. So you'll see a lot more of that, and uh, we're looking, you know, we're excited about it. So. Thanks for joining me. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe. And if you want, please share. Love the thumbs up, love the comments. I respond as soon as I can. And, uh, well, this has been a fun episode. Cheers.